This is Jim Culver, who's unfortunately got quite a plain outfit, but you can see the detail of the individual buttons on the suit. He's got his trumpet, which has got a reasonable amount of detail and does look quite in proportion, and a nice touch is the two-tone shoes and the headband on his hat. There are a couple of creases and wrinkles in the suit, giving it a little bit of texture, and he's almost mid-stride, doing a very slow walk. Not the greatest miniature, but also definitely not the worst. Da -na 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 -na. This is Zoe Samaras, and Zoe is another of the disappointing ones. Pose is extremely rigid, with one arm by her side and the other one clutching the knife, held almost to her chest. Definitely not the dynamic half-turn pose, clutching the knife ready to strike that we see in her artwork. They have paid attention to her outfit, capturing the rolled up sleeves and the blue apron with the white trim, and there's certainly a copious amount of blood, although none on the knife. The hairstyle is interesting and they've tried to capture one of the little strands hanging down there. The back is very plain. What is very disappointing is the face. It's got kind of a joker mouth going on there, and a very scowly expression. The whole head does look very masculine, Almost as if they've pinched it from Roland Banks. Da -da -da -da. This is Marie Lambeau, and they've really paid attention to her costume, capturing the silver dress, the silver bracelets, and the headband. The neckline is different, but they have captured the necklace, and you can just about see the detail of individual beads formed there. The hair looks more grey than brown, but they have tried to capture the style. There's some reasonable thought gone into the pose, with the hand raised clutching the beads, and she definitely looks deep in thought. There's some nice creasing on the skirt and a little flare in the hemline. Unfortunately, you can see a bit of the flashing. If you see that straight line down on her arm there, this is where two halves of the mould for the figure connect, and a little bit of plastic has spilled out. If you're buying this unpainted, obviously you'd trim that off with a very fine file before you painted it. Da, 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 da. This is Rex Murphy. Rex is definitely one of the top figures in this range. They capture his outfit very nicely, and there's a good range of colours used, which are different from those used on the other investigators. As you can see, there's a great deal of detail that's gone into his face. You can see those tiny glasses, the goatee beard, the eyebrows, and the little spiky quiff. Even the belt and the belt buckle are wonderfully well picked out. And you can see details of the buttons of the shirt, you can see creases in the trousers, you see the rolled up cuffs of the shirt, and the watch with its face picked out. Even the soles of the shoes and the creases all the way down his pants are well defined. He's a little more dynamic than the other investigators too. Not just standing there, arms by his sides, unlike Zoe, got his camera up, ready to take a picture, or he's just snapped something horrible. There's a lot of thought and attention to detail that's gone into the design of this miniature, the pose, the sculpt, it's really good. For cheap pre-painted miniatures, obviously. We are unfortunately missing Ashcan Pete, which is a great shame, because obviously his miniature comes with Duke, his dog. And also Jenny Barnes, which has got a great dynamic pose. Mid-action with those twin 45s. Da 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 da